What's up everybody, it's your boy David, and today I'm coming at you with part 2 of my Necron Terrain Month with a Necron Hypercube. I wish 9th edition had come out around the holiday season, then I could have called this Necron Vember. But anyway, let's get to it. This build's starting point is an irregular Rubik style cube. I've only done up one of these so far, but this six pack was about 15 bucks, so pretty affordable even if you want to build a lot of them. I'll put a link to that below. First things first, peel off the stickers. Some side sections may pop off too, but just replace them if they do. Following that, you're going to want to sand the sides to roughen them up a bit and help with paint adhesion. Then start messing around with your cube till it looks good. I recommend having at least three sections the same length on the bottom. This is going to help the model to stand more evenly. Immediately after this, grab some runny super glue. Run it into the cracks between the cube sections to make sure they're locked in place where you want them. Follow this up with a layer or two of black magic base coat. The next step is going to be painting. I started this off with a black metallic craft paint. To start in on the glow effects, I highlighted all of the edges with a metallic green marker. You could use a medium to light paint for this step too. I just went with the marker for speed while edging. There's some margin for error here because the dry brushing is going to cover a lot of this up, but if you get too messy in any given spot, feel free to touch back up with the metallic black. After that, we're going to move on to dry brushing the glow effect. There are many excellent tutorials for ways to do this, but especially for terrain, I like keeping things really simple. First, we're going to dry brush on a layer of light green with a moderately sized brush. As before, you can adjust the balance of black again afterwards. Just make sure if you're doing it here that you dry brush or stipple it to tone down the glow rather than covering it completely. When you're happy with the green, move on to a light yellow for a final highlight. Same idea here, but you're going to be even more conservative. Hit the edges to brighten them up, but do it with a dry brush to avoid it becoming too harsh. I had initially planned to leave the hypercube as a freestanding piece, but I realized at this point it lacked the pizzazz of the pylons from last week. I decided to base it the same way I based them. I cut a 4 inch square of medium chipboard, trimmed the sides with a set of garden shears, and sanded a slight bevel on the edge of the chipboard. To make damn sure the very non-porous cube would stick to the chipboard, I busted out a more heavy duty adhesive. Slap some on both sides where you're going to glue, let it sit for about 10 minutes, and then push the parts together. Since I was only working on one piece, I based the cube with super glue. First I went around the bottom edges of the cube and then I filled out the rest of the base. I used medium grit sand followed by a fine grit sand and then finished off by gluing a few pieces of aquarium gravel to the top layer. To help keep everything in place as well as get a base coat of color on the harder to reach spots of the base, I decided to try out my wet basing glue again. This is a mix of black paint for color, PVA glue to help bind the flocking, and some 50% rubbing alcohol to help reduce the surface tension. I came up with this variation on the idea of wet water last week while basing, and I think it's earned itself a place in my everyday arsenal of tools now. After basing, put your cube outside in the sun to dry faster, and panic because you didn't plan on needing to do basing and you've only got a few hours left before your video needs to go up. Then... <sighs> Take a deep breath and catch the painting on the base up with the rest of the model. Do metallic black on the sand and any parts of the cube that need to be touched up after basing. Gently dry brush the sand a few colors lighter and base coat the aquarium gravel on medium green. Before moving on to the new round of glow effects, I decided to add in a few extra details. This just amounted to a few lines here and there to break up the pattern on the sides of the cube. Then the glowing rocks on the base and the new details got the same treatment as before. A light green dry brush, followed by an even more selective light yellow, before finally cleaning up things by dry brushing some harder black edges on again. And that's week two of what I really wish I could call Necron Vember now. Doing more of these, I'd obviously recommend basing earlier in the build. Only other change I'd recommend would be to sand the cube even more thoroughly. I did find myself needing to redo a few corners as the paint rubbed off a bit, though holding it by a base helps with that too. Stay safe, sane, and crafty out there, everyone. And I'll see you in the next one.